Hello all, welcome to Cast Channel. This is Ratna Kishore. So in this video, so we are going to look at two measures, covariance and correlation. These two measures are used to test the linear relationship between two variables. That means by using these two measures we can test whether the given two variables are having any linear relationship between them or not. Actually relationship measures represents two things. The first one is type of relationship and the second one is strength of the relationship. Type of the relationship means whether two variables are having the positive relationship or negative relationship or non-linear relationship. So non-linear relationship means both the variables are not having any linear relationship between them. And strength of the relationship means whether both the variables are having perfect relationship, strong relationship or weak relationship etc. Now I am going to explain these two things with the help of examples. Here I am presenting three scatter plots. The first scatter plot is having the covariance 109.9 and the correlation 0.8 that means there exists some positive relationship between these two variables x and y that's why we got some positive values here and coming to the second scatter plot we cannot guess any linear relationship between the x and y variables here that's why we got the covariance as well as correlation nearer to 0 in the third case we can find here some negative relationship between x and y so that's why we got the negative values for both covariance as well as correlation. Here we have to understand what is the positive relationship and what is the negative relationship. If you observe the first scatter plot, we can say there is a positive relationship. So that means both the variables are moving in the same direction. Larger values of x, we got the larger values of y. Smaller values of x, we got the smaller values of y. In the same way, if you observe the third scatter plot, we can guess some negative relationship between these two x and y variables. That means while one variable is moving in one direction, other variable is moving in the opposite direction. See here the smaller values of x, we got larger values of y. In the same way for larger values of x, we got smaller values of y. That means both the variables are moving in opposite direction. We can say such direction is negative relationship. Now we will see how to compute the covariance. See this is the formula we have to compute the covariance between x and y variables. Here there is a requirement that both the variables must have the same number of points in them. That means the size of x must be equal to the size of y. So in this formula the assumption is both the variables are having n number of values in them. Where x bar and y bar values represents mean of all the values in x variable and mean of all the values in y variables respectively. So when we can use the covariance as a measure of relationship. If you want to know only the type of the relation between the variables, that means the direction only is the requirement, then prefer covariance. But if you want to know the strength of the relationship, covariance is the not best choice for you. Because in the result of the covariance, the strength is subject to. That means there is no fixed range for this strength. So finally, what you can say? We can use the covariance in order to represent the type of the relation. If the covariance value is greater than 0, then you can say there is a positive relationship between the x and y. That means both the variables are moving in the same direction. If the covariance value is less than 0, we can say there is a negative relationship between the x and y. That means both the variables are moving in opposite direction. If that covariance value is 0, there is no linear relationship between x and y. Some nonlinear relation is there between them. Next computation of correlation. So this is the formula we have to compute the correlation between x and y variables that is r x y. So in the numerator we have the covariance between x and y. In the denominator we have product of standard deviation of the variable x and the standard deviation of the variable y. By substituting the expressions of covariance as well as standard deviations we can get this as the formula to compute the correlation between x and y variables. Like I mentioned earlier x bar and y bar are the means of variables x and y respectively and sx and xy are the standard deviation of the variables x and y respectively and the size of the variables would be n. Guys you can prefer the correlation not only to find 
the direction of the relationship but also the strength of the relationship because the correlation always lies between minus 1 and 1. So based on that we can find the strength of the relationship also. See if the correlation value is greater than 0 we can say there is a positive relationship. If it is less than 0 we can say there is a negative relationship. If it is 0 we can say there is no linear relationship between x and y variables. So that is the type of relation we can get from the value of correlation. We can also find the strength of the relation based on the correlation value. So these are the typical values I am considering to represent different strengths. We can use your own ranges to specify these strengths. See I am using the modulus of Rxy between 0 and 0 0.2. That means Rxy value is between 0 and 0 0.2 or minus 0 0.2 to 0. In those ranges if you have then I can say there is a very weak relationship between x and y. If the modulus of xy value is between 0 0.2 and 0 0.4, I can say there is a weak relationship between x and y. In the same way, if the value is between 0 0.9 and 1, I can conclude that there is a very strong relationship between x and y. Here I am considering the modulus of rxy because this rxy will take both negative values as well as positive values. Now let us implement these two as functions by using the Python programming language. Let's start our coding with the implementation of a function to compute the mean of given list. So the function name I am using as mean which will take a list and then returns the mean of the values present in that list. Let me run this. And then we need to implement another function to compute the covariance between two variables. See I am defining a function cov which takes two lists x and y and returns the covariance between x and y. To compute the value of covariance, first I am considering a list comprehension to get a part of the numerator that is x minus x bar multiplied by y minus y bar. To get all those values as a list, I am using this list comprehension and then I am returning the covariance value by using this formula sum of n1 which gives the numerator value divided by length of that x minus 1 that is n minus 1. Then I am running it and then we need to implement a function to compute correlation. The name of the function is cor and then we know that the correlation is nothing but sxy divided by sx multiplied by sy. So the numerator value I am computing in this way. Here also I am using a list comprehension to get sum of x minus x bar multiplied by y minus y bar for all the values of x and y and also I am using the same mechanism to compute the standard deviation of x and standard deviation of y. Here I am ignoring the n minus 1 both in the numerator and the denominator because both will be cancelled out. So finally if I return the value of sxy divided by sx multiplied by sy that gives the value of correlation between x and y variables. Then I am running it. Then I am going to test the functions. First I will test covariance function and then I will test correlation function. See here I am considering three examples. In the first example I have taken 1, 2, 3 as the values of x variable, 4, 5, 6 as the values of y variable. If you clearly observe both the variables, both are having the linear relationship. So that's why we got the covariance value as 1.0. And then I am passing 1, 2, 3 as x values and then 6, 5, 4 as y values. Clearly which is having a negative relationship. That's why we got negative 1 here. And in the third example I am passing x as 1, 2, 3 and then y as 33, 45 and 23. Here also you can find some negative relationship. That's why we got negative 5. Clearly if you observe here 1, negative 1 and negative 5. These are the values we got here. That means it is representing whether the relation is a positive relation or negative relation or there is no relation at all. But we cannot guess the strength of the relation based on the values we got out of the covariance function. Now we will test correlation function. Here I am using the same examples for the x and y. Then I am running this. See, if you consider the first example we got around positive 1 as the value of correlation. That means there is a strong positive relation between x and y. Clearly we can say that. And if you observe the second example, we have a strong negative relationship between the x and y. That's why we got negative 1 around 
as the value of correlation. But we can say there is a negative relationship between x and y but it is not a strong relationship. That's why we got around negative 0.45 as the correlation value. So we can say this is a moderate negative relationship between x and y we have. So in this way we can use the covariance to know only the type of relation we have between the x and y variables. And if you want to know not only the direction of the relationship but also the strength of the relationship then the option we have is correlation. So that's all guys. This is the end of this video.